Welcome to the next episode of the Miss Collegiate USA Director's Cut Pageant Talk from the Director's Perspective, hosted by yours truly, Dr. Kia Brown, founder and president of the Miss Collegiate USA organization. Today, I'm meeting with the Queen's Magnet founder, Journey Carr Stout. All right, and we are back with Director's Cut, the podcast. I am honored and privileged to be here with Journey Stout, the founder of the Queen's Magnet. Journey, thank you so much for being here. This is awesome, Kia. I'm so grateful to be part of this. I'm excited you're here. And without hesitation, you were like, I'm in and I want to be a part of it. So thank you so much. <laughs> You've yes. actually been that way in every aspect of you know pageantry and supporting one another. So I, I thank you for that. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you and learn a little bit about you. Um, I, I followed your journey as being a pageant girl myself for quite some time. And so I know that you were crowned Miss Teen International. We won't say the year. <laughs> Uh, been a minute. <laughs> you held that title, which is a power title. And, um, you know, I know that you've been involved in pageantry after that point. And so what are you currently involved in? What's your passions? What has kind of taken you by storm in the industry? Yes. Yeah, so I loved competing in pageants. I, my mom put me in a few whenever I was a baby because I'm from Tennessee. If you can't hear that, uh, every Southern pageant mom thinks their daughter is absolutely beautiful and perfect and they're all correct. So we put them all in pageants. So my mom put me in a few, but I did not do very well. I did not win. I was barely placing. Uh, there was a few times that she said that I would pick my nose on stage. And then I do have a, uh, a picture of a an old newspaper article from 1996 it's black and white and it's these two cute little girls next to me and they're smiling and I'm going uh. so I pageantry was not my thing as a baby but I watched the Miss Universe and Miss USA pageant on TV and was like oh I gotta do this so whenever I was about 11 years old I asked to do our local fair pageant and I wore this beautiful Glinda the Good Witch pink puffy dress and I got so second runner up. And I came back the next year in the same dress, about two inches too short, and I won. <laughs> so I learned the, the value of hard work. I also played basketball my entire life from kindergarten through high school. And I'm now a coach's wife, and we're actually going to a basketball game tomorrow night. So pageantry was like another sport to me. And I know I, I knew that I had to work hard to get better and uh, to be able to excel and feel successful. So I, I just translated that right into pageantry and uh, was absolutely treated Miss Teen International no differently. Actually competed the year before and got fourth runner up and the preliminary fitness competition. And then the next year, I totally changed my mindset and said, okay, I I want to humble myself and not think that I'm the best just because I've I've worked so hard and I've gotten here. But I want to use this title to serve. And it totally transformed the way that I spoke, the way that I presented myself on stage. And it was an honor to be Miss Teen International. So since then, I held a national title as a Miss. I've been a pageant director. And then my most favorite thing that I've been involved in in the pageant industry is being the founder of the Queen's Magnet. I think that's awesome. You, um, I love that you said how pageantry just tr provided discipline. And it is a sport. Um, I think a lot of people, there's a misconception about pageantry, um, that it's always about beauty, but it has really taught young women how to handle disappointment, which has been, you kind of talked about the first year you were runner up and then coming back and being persistent and improving yourself um, definitely shows the power of pageantry. So I appreciate you shared that. I remember my first pageant, It I was fourth runner up, but I won like all of the optionals, um, photogenic. Right. And I remember carrying all of my trophies and refusing my family to carry any of them because I felt like this is a stepping stone. And then similar to your story, the next one, um, I won in Little Miss Hartford County and my community for MAO system. And it was a bug <laughs> and it became my sport. <laughs> so I love that pageantry kind of just aligned and it seems very common that women and pageantry are becoming women in business and how that aligns. And it's, it's so powerful to see and so the Queen's Magnet, I really want you to share, you know, how you came up with the concept, 
Um, I, I kind of got, have an idea because I have been a pageant girl for such a long time, but I would love for you to share kind of the concept, your vision and what the Queen's Magnet is looking to for the future. Yes. So uh, competed in pageants for about 16 years to, or I've been in the industry for 16 years and I competed regularly for about 10 ish. And of course I, that's just what we used was safety pins was to put our contestant numbers on. And my mom would work so hard. Uh, my first little dress was $99 from a little formal wear store. And we just thought, Oh my gosh, we just bought a new car. I mean, it was so expensive. <laughs> And looking at pageant dresses now, you're like, wow, that is a drop in the bucket. <laughs> but I mean, to, just to see my mom buy that dress, she placed all the sequins, not stones, sequins um, on. Uh, she We made straps because I wanted straps on it. So just to see all of the hard work that goes into a gown. And then on pageant day, you look your best, you feel your best. You've got your spray tan, your hair and makeup, your mindset's right. And then, oh, you poke a hole in your dress for your contestant number. And it's just like a, oh, uh, just like a <laughs> hit in the gut to do that. Um, and so I never liked that idea. Whenever I competed in a glitz pageant, I competed in one glitz pageant. And then my younger sister competed in one glitz pageant. We, uh, someone gave us a magnet or something and I, I watched my sister use it and then I used it in a pageant after that. And I went, oh my gosh, that's mine now. I love that. I am going to reinvent what this is. So magnets are very common in the glitz world, but in the, the glitz world calls all the other pageants scholarship pageants. So in the scholarship or the natural world, it wasn't very common. Um, and I am not the first person to make magnets. I will not be the last, but the queen's magnet is the best. It is the strongest bling magnet on the market. And it all started, let me grab it right here real quick. It all started with this little magnet right here. It's just a half inch. It's called AB queen. And I, I began with about 12 different products. It took me several weeks to research and learn what a magnet is and what does it mean to be aligned axially with a magnet and how, how does that translate into a, a jeweled piece of an accessory uh, for pageant girls. So I took a lot of time to learn what that is, learn the different strengths and types of magnets and began developing my product. I went through several different strengths of magnets, but this is by far what I have found is the strongest uh, on the market. My manufacturers are amazing. I have the back of all of my magnets engraved with a little crown that says QM, so you know that it's ours. <laughs> and so from there, I just started to expand. I was actually very afraid. Uh, the very first time I took my pageants or took my magnets to a pageant, I was afraid because I was like, I don't think people are going to understand what this is. Mm. And people still quite don't that aren't sure uh, or that are new to the pageant world. But when I go, oh, here, you just slide it off, poke it on. They go, oh, it's like a big light bulb moment. It's like a total game changer for everyone. Um, so just being able to launch my product in person at pageants, I said, okay, I know there's a pageant every single weekend in the South. I mean, there's like two or three a day sometimes. <laughs> so I, I'm not short of in-person sales, but I wanted to launch a, web, a website that would be have free flowing uh, content availability of products for girls. And ever since then, those first 12 products that I had have now gone to over 500 products on my website on an Etsy shop. And now some of my products are available on Amazon Prime. So we just did a, a very recent, uh, it took about two full months uh, to change over from my former website to a brand new website platform. I saw that. That's awesome. Major, major makeover, like, whoa, total facelift. <laughs> uh, but it, it was time. And I, I really appreciate my old website. I put a lot of hard work into it. But I wanted to change, uh, just give a facelift to my brand moving forward. And I think my website, I'm really proud of it. It took a lot of hard work. And I think it's a step in the, in the right direction uh, in the future for the next phase of the Queen's Magnet. And also 
adding more products to Amazon Prime. That is definitely going to be in the future. So I recently just added all of our glitter ribbon awareness magnets uh, to Amazon Prime. Yes, so those just uh, went through the Fulfilled by Amazon Processing Center just a few days ago. I got that email notification. So I'm slowly adding more because Amazon is truly a different level uh, whenever you are a retailer. It is a completely global market um, that is insane. <laughs> so, I mean, as much as I order on Amazon, it, it's crazy to see what the world orders. <laughs> um, but that, that is my next step is to get uh, even more products on Amazon. And I am just scaling that as we go so that it doesn't become overwhelming for me and my team. But I'm ready. I'm very ready for it to be overwhelming. <laughs> that is amazing. That's just a testimony because from 12 to over 500. That's amazing. Congratulations. I did also see the launch of the new website, which can be a task <laughs> itself to do the uplift, but it is, you know, key to staying relevant and um, Amazon Prime is amazing. So congratulations to you. I'm excited for your future because the magnet, it's funny that you say that because um, safety pens have been like the item that is used for name tag. And I remember my mom, like just her heart breaking as she was pinning the number <laughs> on to my dress. And so the magnets, it's, it was kind of like an aha, like, well, of course this makes sense. And it only took journey to come up with that concept and make it, you know, pageant like, should I say, um, very blank. So we're proud. I know that MCU staff name badges are like, super strong. Um, it has the power. And so we've used that for our team and our judges as kind of like a, you've walked past over the stone and now you get the official Queen's Magnet name tag. You're official. Um, so we're looking forward to continuing our partnership. So with that being said, the Queen's Magnet is one of our national sponsors and has been, um, which has been amazing and a blessing. And so I would love to hear from you, you know, why you decided to become a national sponsor with us as a scholarship pageant um, and new and upcoming. And what could you share from your perspective that could be a, an invitation for girls interested in competing? Well, Kia, it's all because of you. I mean, I, I love the concept that you have. And I think I, if I, if you would have had this whenever I was in college, I would have competed. I would have loved to have been Miss Collegiate USA. That would have been so cool. So I just, I love the concept. I love your theme. I love your focus on academia, scholarship, and sisterhood. It's, it takes it to a different level where, yes, you do have the glam. Your contestants, your title holders are very glam. I've been honored to meet uh, one of them in person at Miss USA last year when I saw you there. And she's just fabulous. And I was like, you know what? He has really got this together because she is walking the walk and talking the talk. You have a doctorate degree. You are a former pageant girl. And so when contestants are looking and going, what is Miss High School USA? What is Miss Collegiate USA? When they start diving and they go on your Facebook page or find you somewhere on Google, they're going to know, oh, this system, they have a great foundation because of their director. So uh, everything that we do, I'm like, it's because I really like Kia. She's great. <laughs> and you, you just, you've really poured your heart and soul into this. And it's very clear uh, that this is, God's calling on your life. I mean, this is what you, you, you are using your voice to do this. And now you're taking an, another step, having a podcast, reaching even more girls in the pageant world. Um, I just, I see so much success with you and we want to follow you. We want to be on your coattails. <laughs> Same. I appreciate that. That's so, so kind and so sweet. And I didn't even pay you to say that, but <laughs> you appreciate it. I was sponsorship <laughs> for. <laughs> But I was super excited to meet you in person, too, because, you know, I think a lot of pageant girls, we kind of know each other by social media and Facebook, and we kind of follow each other's journeys as they compete. Um, no pun intended, but um, <laughs> but just to meet you in person, you have that same energy and just warm embrace. So I'm glad that pageantry has brought great title holders and veterans together in creating business and really just building a future for future contestants and business owners. So and that, 
Yes, that moment was so cool. I will never forget it because we, it was after finals. So um, Arbany was just crowned. Yes. So I go out in the hallway and right there is Amy Emmerich. And then right there is Paula Shugart. And here comes Dr. Kia Brown. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what is, this is the best. This is like the best pageant minds all coming together in one. It was, it was just a big, it was a big moment because it's like, we're all here. We're all doing this. And it, it is truly a sisterhood. It's not a competition. You can make it a competition, but you're not going to go anywhere wear with it. So the more that we support each other and pro help propel each other forward, the more successful we're all going to be. Absolutely. Um, it's, I, I like to go back and always ask my question, like, what's the biggest misconception of the pageant industry? And I feel like you've hit that several times just in our quick conversation, but what would be one of like the biggest call outs? Because it seems like we are sisters, even though we might not have met physically until recently, but we felt like we were sisters in that way. What do you think other people kind of misconceive pageantry to be? I do think that we are all kindred spirits because you have all of these incredible, passionate, driven women. We're all running the same race. We're just in a different lane. Maybe our outfit looks a little different. Our time looks a little different in this race, but we're all running uh, to the same finish line, you know, and we, that's another thing is we keep making new races for ourselves. We're never done. Um, and we run together and I really love that. So apart from that, truthfully, going back to glitz, one of the biggest questions that I always get asked is, what is glitz? And I think there's a, a big divide of people either that are seasoned veteran pageant girls that know everything from the beginning. And then there's a new wave of pageant girls that are like, well, my dress is glitzy. It has rhinestones on it. And I'm going, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, there's a difference between lowercase G and capital G, right? Um, so it's kind of like learning a different style of dance. There are all sort of different it's all dance, but hip hop is very different from jazz is very different from tap, you know, <laughs> uh, but they're all doing the same song and dance. Right. So I think uh, something that is misconceived is that one type of pageant or one type of pageant system is bad or worse than the other. When again, we're all just in the same race running together. You just got to find which race is the one that you want to run in. And it's okay. Whichever one that you do, it's okay. We'll all support you. We're all doing the same things. Our hairstyles and makeup styles and dress styles might look different, but at the end of the day, there's still going to be a crown on somebody's head, right? Yes, that you align that. And you said something very similar to our current Miss Collegiate USA, Jessica Hall, where she said all of our, all of the Miss Collegiate USA title holders are all different. Um, and so it makes it was my hope that Miss Collegiate USA would be able to identify the beauty in each individual young lady and not just coin it as a template or a signature look, um, speech, background. It was going to identify a variety of different young ladies. So to have you a part of our family, because as a sponsor, you become family, not just a sponsor or a business owner. Um, and then, as I always love to say, you're stuck with us because yes. you can't leave this family. <laughs> and I'm definitely stuck because our magnets get stuck on literally everything because they're so strong. So it makes sense. You know, it's so funny because the magnets were like quality. I remember the first year I purchased them all for the board members and they um, even Andrew who is our vice president, he was like, it has rhinestones on it. And I was like, isn't it so pretty? It's so pretty. <laughs> and so, um, but everybody always forgot it was still on because it wasn't a magnet that you would like pull off or get attached to something. Once it's on, it's on. And then when you go to dinner, people are like, oh, hey, Kia. And you're like, what? what? Oh, <laughs> So definitely quality. And yes, you we are stuck together because of the magnets and the business that you created. I love it. <laughs> so I do want to talk about um, you started a business and, you know, you sh shed some light on the development and how beautiful the business has blossomed. Um, and I'm so proud to be a part of that journey with you. But I would love for you to give some like 
some of the challenges of being a business owner and some of the things that, you know, this is rosy over here, but these are some of the challenges that we might, you might experience for another young woman that is looking to become a boss babe and be a business owner herself. Absolutely. So knowing how to use uh, Google and <laughs> how to use some different graphic design platforms and how to you how to do a uh, even a drag and drop website style whatever that may be just getting tech savvy you don't have to learn code uh, to make your own website or learn how to do Etsy but being able to uh, follow other the brands that you regularly buy from you can create a look that is as professional as that. So the websites that we all typically buy from, you're going, wow, it looks it looks so put together. They're they're a legit business. You can do that too. It just it takes time. Um, so again, it, for me, it took it took several weeks, uh, even. I think it was a few months before I even really launched my product. And years before that, I'm not just looking at websites and other products and going, oh, that's cute. Let me buy that. I'm going, okay, how are they doing things that are unique to them? Because I believe that everyone is uniquely and wonderfully made. So all the passions and the thoughts and the opinions and the things that you're drawn to are ordained by God. And we should explore what those are. So some of mine is being an entrepreneur and just being uh, aware of, like you said, the relativity of certain products and certain looks. And I knew that, you know, I've had this look for a while. It was time to change it up. I had an original logo that was very similar to the one that we had, uh, but I actually had one of my friends who has her master's in art. She's super awesome. Uh, she does a lot of our digital uh, logo creating. She created my logo to be unique and wonderful to what my passions are. So it still had the elements of the flowers, but it actually has, if you look a little closer, it actually has the crown of thorns in it. So it's very subtle uh, to show uh, the, the crown of thorns that Jesus wore on the cross whenever um, he uh uh, took our place and uh, changed my life. So uh, he changed my life and I wanted to add that into my logo. So not just being tech savvy, you can learn those things, but listening to your heart, following those things that you're like, I'm so passionate about X, Y, and Z, and then putting your own personal take, your own style into elements like your logo, go for it. And it is okay if it takes time. Things happen very quickly in this world. They happen very, things move fast in the pageant world, but that doesn't mean that you're behind just because you've been thinking of an idea that you've had in your head for five years. Just try it out, girlfriend. Ask your family and friends. Make the product. Uh, make start the coaching business. Start start the pageant. Do whatever it is. To start becoming a hair and makeup artist. Do, buy a camera. Be a photographer. Whatever it is, you don't have to be at a global level the first week that you tried this out. Absolutely. Well said. I think that's amazing advice. Um, and. I love that you put your passions and who you are into your love, into your business. And I think that's what makes it so unique. Um, and it really puts the individual at front. It's the queen's magnet, but it's also journey. Right. So people get to have both um, the benefits of such a great person aligned with this great business and this great concept. So yes, make that, take that leap. Um, it's part of why I started Miss Collegiate USA um, it was just a leap of faith in having great people behind you, such as yourself and other sponsors, businesses and organizations that believe in your mission and your vision and your values that will make you a strong individual. Um, and like you said, it doesn't happen overnight. And look at you from 12 to five over 500 and now you're on Amazon. And I'm glad that we're here in the beginning. <laughs> No, absolutely not. You again, you are stuck with me. And I just I believe in what you're doing and I want to be part of it. So, girls, if you are looking for a pageant system, start looking into who the director is. And just like we're talking about the individual nature of these things is all of these pageants, these businesses are created by somebody. So learn about who they are and see if you can connect in some way and align with the mission that they have, because that is truly from their hearts. That is the 
the unique thing about every pageant is that their their statement comes from their heart. The the reason why I do this business, it comes from my passions. So learn about the creators and the founders uh, and get to know Kia more. She's super cool. Uh, and you'll and you will love the system you're part of. It just won't become another pageant. It will become a sisterhood. You'll be seeing a lot more of us on Amazon. So be sure to follow our storefront. And the biggest thing you can do is leave us a five star review. If you don't <laughs> like it, don't review it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that goes for any product. If you want to support a business and uh, leave them a five star review, like find Collegiate USA on Google, go to their reviews and just leave five stars. It helps so much uh, with your honest opinion, um, especially on platforms like Google and Amazon, right? Where every, that's the first thing that everyone sees. Um, so the, as we grow, uh, the more feedback that the girls who love our products give, it helps people discover us that don't don't know what, who we are or haven't found this quite yet. I love that. And where can we find you? What is the website and Instagram? Yes, it is the Queen's Magnet all over Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok. I'm trying to get do a little bit more TikTok. I feel like an old person sometimes whenever I use TikTok. Yeah, <laughs> we're there. We're there, unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, but I'm trying. So I've got some more fun content coming out. Um, so be sure to check out those reels and the TikTok feed. Um, and then also thequeensmagnet.com. And you can also go to etsy.com slash thequeensmagnet and find us there. Perfect. I will leave all of those links in the comments so everybody can follow and provide five-star reviews, including myself. Um, to support the Queen's Magnet journey. Thank you so much for coming. I greatly appreciate your friendship and your support for the organization as well as the platform. Thank you for saying yes immediately. Of course. I, I'm not going to say no to you guys. I love what you're doing. I love who you are. You've produced some amazing national title holders and it's been fun following their journeys and seeing uh, the next steps that they're taking in pageantry. So you are doing the right things. And like I said, we're going to ride those coattails. We're going to ride on the cape of your evening gown. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> well, thank you so much.